John, don't! Ultra Human Knight, the deadly albino gorilla with an advanced mind. DC has never disappointed when it comes to offering up complex, weird, and new villains to the audiences. On this channel, we have extensively reviewed Batman villains. However, Superman also has an impressive rogues gallery which we will dive into today. When it comes to iconic villains that have gone up against the Man of Steel, one immediately thinks of Brainiac or Lex Luthor. However, there was one supervillain that came before all of them and challenged Superman's skills and abilities. This challenger was not your typical mobster or evil genius and was actually a unique super albino gorilla that happened to be the first supervillain that Superman ever fought. This albino gorilla is known as the Ultra Human Knight and has a rather interesting story. Let us take you all the way to his first appearance and how he went on to become one popular evil gorilla all across the DC universe. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The first comic book appearance and origins explored. He first appeared in Action Comics issue number 13, all the way back in the year 1939. The comic book opens with Clark Kent riding in a cab when he gets hit by a cab driver from a competing company. When he confronts the competing driver, the driver says that he was a member of the Cab Protective League, or CPL, a group that targeted independent cab companies and was trying to seize control of the city's taxi trade, which turned quite the profit. However, this ultra humanite is nothing like the albino gorilla we have come to know. Superman then went to the Carlisle Cab Company, where he witnessed the boss being intimidated by a CPO member. He made his presence there known by thrashing a racketeer, then picking him up and leaping into the air. The racketeer attempted to knife him, which caused Superman to fly into a building, killing the racketeer as he fell to his death. Mr. Reynolds, the CPO's boss, then telephoned Mr. Carlisle and inquired about his willingness to pay for his security, which he refused. Reynolds and his goons went to confront Carlisle since he refused and intimidated him into it. Superman, however, shows up and blows up their cars, ordering them all to blow up their own taxis. Under pressure from the Man of Steel, Reynolds admits to ordering the killings to the other drivers and is caught by Superman. He was convicted and sentenced to the Sing Sing Penitentiary. On his way there, Reynolds lights a cigarette as the cops drive him to the station. However, the cops discover that the cigarette contains a deadly gas, but it was too late by then and they were already unconscious. Superman begins tracking Reynolds after learning of his escape and discovers a discarded police car in the same location where the cops were last seen. He finally founds him in a secluded cabin. He crashes through the cabin's roof where he encounters Reynolds, who finally presents him to his Boston employer, the Ultra Human Knight, the world's most intelligent man. Superman sees that he is paralyzed from the waist down and wheelchair bound but is a wicked mad scientist. The domination of Earth is his grand ambition. He is known to be a mental behemoth who runs a wide ring of nefarious businesses and has fiery eyes that flare with awful anger and deadly knowledge. His real name has never been revealed, but ever since a scientific experiment resulted in having the most agile and educated brain on earth, he has been dubbed the Ultra Human Knight. When Superman approaches the Ultra Human Knight, he is temporarily knocked out by a wave of electricity that shocks him. Superman is then promptly strapped to a board and fed into a sawmill by the Ultra Human Knight in hopes of destroying the superhero once and for all. For the most intelligent person on Earth, definitely not the cleverest course of action when it comes to killing Superman. The saw blades, as predicted, have no effect on Superman. However, poor Mr. Reynolds is killed when one of the blades breaks off. The Ultra Human Knight then summoned his henchmen who transport his incapacitated body to a nearby special plane and then set fire to the cabin when he realized that his plan was not going to work. Superman awakens and flees the cabin just before the fire threatens to kill him. He then deliberately crashes into the plane that was carrying away Ultra Human Knight, but alas, could never find the criminal's body in the wreckage. The Ultra Human Knight was created to be the exact opposite of Superman. While Superman is a superhuman hero with insane physical prowess, Ultra Human Knight is a criminal mastermind with a damaged body but a highly evolved intellect. Until Lex Luthor was introduced into the comics, the Ultra Human Knights was Superman's prime primary antagonist. The beginnings of the Ultra Human Knight, a super criminal, are shrouded in obscurity. Even he claims he has no recollection of his true identity or appearance, and he blames his tremendous intellect and mental aptitude on unidentified scientific operations. Unfortunately for him, his physical brain interface never advanced as his mind's energies continue to increase and extend, even generating low-level mind energy abilities like telepathy. His body began to burn out slowly as he was unable to contain the mental 
energies. Thus, he began transplanting his brain and consciousness into other bodies. Many of the ultra-human knight's audacious and famous criminal activities were perpetrated in the body of actress Dolores Winters. Dolores Winters' body was chosen by the ultra-human knight because, in that age, most male cops would not accuse a woman, let alone a well-known public figure, of being a criminal mastermind. Finally, the ultra-human knight transplants his consciousness to an albino gorilla body and becomes a significant supervillain on Earth 2 in the yearly JLA JSA team up in Justice League of America number 195 through 197 in 1981. This is where he ultimately gets his iconic albino ape persona. In fact, he is known to have transplanted his brain into a variety of human and animal bodies, eventually choosing the albino gorilla due to its incredible physical strength, the one thing that he lacked. Use that thing for all I care. I couldn't feel any worse. As you wish. Ultra Human Knight in Justice League Animated Series. The Ultra Human Knight appeared in three episodes in this Justice League animated series and was shown to be not as terrifying as in the comic books, which for many fans was quite disappointing. His true powers were never put to good use during his stint in the Injustice Gang in the animated series. He, however, appears in his albino gorilla form in three episodes, namely Injustice for All, Only a Dream, where he only has a cameo in a dream and last Lastly, in the episode titled Comfort and Joy. Human Knight was portrayed to be unlike any other supervillain in this version of his character. He was shown to be a sincere admirer of the great arts, particularly opera, and not as much of a wicked supervillain who wanted to take over the world. The zeal he had for pursuing the arts was so intense that Batman used it to convince him to turn on Lex Luthor and the Injustice Gang. As a result, Human Knight handed himself in to enjoy the cultural programming that was facilitated by a generous contribution made in his name by Batman, which was was more than double what Luther was compensating him with. Ultra Human Knight later revealed his more human side. He had actually intended to destroy a gigantic museum selection of modern art figurines, which he considered garbage. But he decided to take a break from wickedness to spend Christmas with Flash and some orphans playing with a toy the Flash had brought that he had accidentally broken but refitted to tell the Nutcracker story. Later, Human Knight returns to jail and Flash thanks him for his assistance. Human Knight states that he appreciates any opportunity to introduce youngsters to culture. Flash then gifts him a Christmas tree and Human Knight finds the aluminum Christmas tree surprise to be very moving and informs Flash that he hasn't had one since he was a child. Definitely not a portrayal that DC fans were used to, but an interesting one nonetheless. Waiting for me, dear boy. And you are? I am the Ultra Humanite. Ultra Humanite and Batman the Brave and the Bold. Ultra Human Knight's lore is a little different in his appearance in Batman, The Brave and the Bold. In the 1940s, the Ultra Human Knight was a deviant scientist and genius inventor. His biggest accomplishment was mastering the capacity to transfer his brain into other people's bodies. The bodies of film star Dolores Winters, a huge ant, and a genetically modified albino ape were alleged to have been stolen by Ultra Human Knight. Specific to this story arc, the Ultra Human Knight was used by the Axis powers during World War II to tip the scales of the war in their favor. He created a facility on Dinosaur Island in the South Pacific and installed mind control transmitters in the indigenous population of dinosaurs and pterodactyls. As a new host body, he employed an albino Tyrannosaurus rex, which would also become one of his best known animal host bodies. The army was utilized by Ultra Human Knight to shoot out allied planes, which attracted special operations from the likes of Batman and the creature Commandos. Unafraid, he vowed to unleash the animals on the globe and conquer it for the act his powers. The commandos were finally able to disable Ultra Human Knight's remote control, allowing the animals to escape. Ultra Human Knight attempted to flee to his complex but was apprehended, bringing an end to his story in this run. Ultra Human Knight as portrayed in Young Justice. This was Ultra Human Knight's fourth on-screen appearance. In this one, we see him first in the body of an old woman. He had implanted his brain into the body of a woman sometime before 2008. In this body, he was a frail woman with long gray hair and an elderly appearance. The Justice Society of America and the All-Star Squadron were both enemies of the Ultra Human Knight during this time. A group of scientists led by the now elderly woman, who was actually Ultra Human Knight, arrived in Wanda in the year 2008 to conduct studies on the local gorillas. Tolifar, an albino gorilla, had his brain swapped with that of the female leader and therefore became the new body for Ultra Human Knight's brain. Tolifar was interestingly the first to be caught and Human Knight must have taken an added shine to him. He had a gray face and the enormous body of a white gorilla. 
A brain-like growth had replaced his upper head as a result of the transplant. On the right side of his mouth, he also had a little scar. In the story, he partners up with Monsieur Mala, another super intelligent ape supervillain who often goes up against the misfit superhero squad Doom Patrol. His vicious and nasty personality was on display in the episode when he and the scientists constructed a compound of laboratories dubbed Gorilla City in a sadistic display of mockery and enslaved an entire troop of gorillas, except for for one who managed to dodge them. They use inhibitor collars to sedate the gorillas and brain surgeries and cobra venom to improve them. The scientists kept their children captive to ensure the gorillas' compliance. Throughout the series, Humanite is shown to be torturing animals in the name of science and scientific experimentation. He also joins the Injustice League at one point in his storyline that spans over four seasons of the show. As part of the Injustice League, he was again in charge of modified plant creatures that coordinated a global plant attack, once again using science for evil. Later, he also joined Light, which is a self-proclaimed group of enlightened members who want to be the ones to bring about the next evolutionary step of mankind and will go to any lengths to achieve their goal. He was an active member and conducted many experiments such as cloning and meta programs to further their cause. However, he was not just a mad scientist, but also a hitman and carried out plans like kidnapping on behalf of Light. Thus, in this portrayal of Ultra Human Knight, he is shown as a ruthless villain who has no regard for life in any form and uses beings as his lab rats to further his own needs. He is truly shown to be the terrible villain that was originally imagined for Superman to fight and take down. What makes Ultra Human Knight such a powerful enemy? He definitely has a unique physiology as he is practically a super intelligent human brain in the body of an albino gorilla for most of his appearances. His most important power is his enhanced intellect as he is a scientific genius after all, criminal or not. He is best known for the insane experiments that he conducts with no care for human or animal life. He also acquired superhuman strength as he changed bodies, specifically in an albino gorilla in Tyrannosaurus bodies, and thus also had superhuman durability. He could also control other gorillas in his most iconic ultra humanite form. He also wielded sufficient power to implement a suggestion in the minds of almost all members of Infinity Inc., simultaneously thus giving him the power of hypnosis. He was able to use telepathy, telekinesis, and brain blasts which are waves of energy projected from the brain as a result of his constantly expanding mind energies. Apart from his physical powers, he is also an extremely skilled person. He knows advanced scientific techniques which can give superpowers to ordinary humans. He is so intelligent that he once calculated that the banishment of certain heroes to interdimensional limbo would face off all heroes in Earth 2. He was a genius when it came to all things technology and medicine. In fact, it is said that he knew how to cure cancer. In the various different bodies that Ultra Human Knight possessed, he had different abilities. He was extremely attractive in Dolores Winter's body and thus could use the powers of seduction and in the gorilla's body, he could perform acrobatics with ease along with other physical feats with the help of great strength. One of his biggest weaknesses, however, was that his brain was too advanced and regular human bodies were unable to host it. The brain caused the body to degenerate resulting in him constantly having to change bodies. This is also the reason why he genetically modified the albino gorilla to be able to house his brain and consciousness for longer amounts of time. Along with that, he had a monstrous appearance in his gorilla or dinosaur body, which made it really hard for him to be inconspicuous. An all new power upgrade now makes him stronger. In Superman in the Authority number three, Ultra Human Knight was seen once again, and here he places his consciousness in the body of Solomon Grundy, another DC supervillain who was originally introduced as an enemy of Alan Scott, the original Green Lantern. Solomon Grundy is one hunk of a beast and thus was already a strong villain. Ultra Human Knight in Grundy's body knocks out a power drained Superman in Fort Superman, vowing to remake the planet using the man of tomorrow's Kryptonian abilities. This already shows that in the massive muscular body of Grundy, Human Knight is a major threat. Clark then awakens in the battle city of Kandor, which is a planet that features an artificial atmosphere that replicates Krypton's gravity conditions, which thus renders native Kryptonians helpless. Human Knight 
thinks he has the upper hand because of the atmosphere of Kandor, but Clark reveals that the artificial environment has been turned off and fights the Ultra Human Knight intensely before Lois Lane subdues the villain with a white kryptonite rifle, which is a weapon that is effective against Grundy's plant-based body. After subduing him and studying his brain, they discovered that the brain of Ultra Human Knight has been enhanced with modern technology and bears the hallmark emblem of the Cosmic World Collector in DC's supervillain, Brainiac, who serves as one of Superman's main villains and is said to have the knowledge of all the universe. Previously, the Ultra Human Knight could only transplant his brain into one body at a time, but with this new Brainiac-powered enhancement, the villain could now clone his consciousness over numerous bodies at once. As a result, they no longer regarded themselves as a single person, but rather as the forerunner of humanity's next evolutionary step. The Ultra Human Knight then attacks the G7 summit on climate change in Dubai with an army of drones driven by replicas of his brain as part of Brainiac's plot to save the Earth's environment from humanity's ruin as part of this story arc. Other villains and former heroes such as Eclipso, Fleur de Lis, and Iron Cross join him. Even if the new authority team that consisted of cynical and often rule-bending superheroes like Apollo, Midnighter, Enchantress, Manchester Black, Steel, Light Tray, and Omac are able to stop him. The villain's new consciousness cloning technology means they may never truly die as long as one body remains. The Ultra Human Knight returns to Brainiac's ship, which was trapped in Earth's orbit, and enters a hangar full of various bodies at his disposal, including a dinosaur, many alien animals, a chemo like android, and a frog, showing that he had many bodies at his disposal. When Clark discloses that he plans to leave Earth to save other planets, Ultra Human Knight feels that the Man of Tomorrow has handed over control of Earth's destiny to him and his team, and sets out to assassinate his son, John Kent. Morrison thus finally brought Superman's first arch nemesis, giving him better powers as well as increased emotional depth and nuance and potentially reinstating him as a major Superman adversary. The Ultra Human Knight has been around for a very, very long time as a supervillain and has faced a plethora of heroes. He has also had a long career which has spanned many bodies with the most iconic one being the albino gorilla. He is definitely not one to be underestimated and is actually regarded as one of the most intelligent Superman foes by many, being classified as intellectually superior to Lex Luthor as well. What do you think about the Ultra Human Knight? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.